on the 30th it's going to be at 8 a.m. at the links of Lake Erie um, the cost is forty dollars for members seventy dollars for non-members they need you to sign up and if you have any questions on that you need to see Richie Sharp or Aaron Westaway and uh, that's that now for the teens we've got a Cedar Point trip scheduled for August the 23rd I need everybody to sign up by August 17th so I can have some kind of a total of what how many we're going to be taking um, we are taking a bus but the bus has been rented for the teens first uh, no disrespect to any parents this we're doing this from the ages of 12 and through the class of uh, 2003 so if your kids are in that age group that's fine we also have a standby list that we're taking the kids under 12 because normally they have to be chaperoned anyway so this bus has been scheduled for the ages of 12 to the class of 2003 first if your kids are younger than that and you're planning on going with them I know myself I'll probably end up driving so if we can work out a carpool to where we can do all that together that's more than fine there are two sign-up sheets there if the bus isn't full then whoever's on the sign-up list at that point will be moved over um, we ha also have the 30-hour famine rewards are in see my wife Debbie Hinkle and after church and we'll get those prizes to your kids for the things that they did they had sponsors and they got rewards for however many dollars they earned and uh, those rewards are in so your kids can pick those up today after church uh, Randy would like the sanctuary choir here at 545 the Sunday school picnic was scheduled I think for August 17th and that's been moved we're moving that to the Saturday the 13th of September we're having a community day that's going to be coming with our uh, church what do you call that <laughs> anniversary we're doing the camp meeting that week and we're also celebrating that from then okay uh, one other thing I'd like to do this morning can I have all the Sunday school teachers stand up this morning anybody that's teaching Sunday school class this morning I just felt of the Lord to uh, make mention of these people we got a lot of people doing a lot of work in this um, I'd also like to mention the secretaries Don and uh, Corrine could you stand as well there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes around here that nobody sees and I tell you what I want to give these people a hand this morning if you would I really appreciate every one of you I think you guys do an awesome job and I just wanted to make mention of that this morning all right let's do birthdays anybody got a birthday today that they're celebrating this week Jamie, we'll start with you. How old are you? 27. All right, congratulations. Brother Revel, let's give her a hand. How old are you today, brother? You're legally able to draw Social Security. Well, now for me, that's going to be 67, so that makes you 62? All right, let's give him a hand this morning. Matt, is it your birthday or Caleb's? Caleb, can I give you a pencil, buddy? And take the pencil for me? Happy birthday. Alright. And last but certainly not least, how about Brianna? You telling how old you are today? 14. Let's give all these birthday people a hand. And let's sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thirty-four. Any words of wisdom today? <laughs> Don't even ask Keith. How many for you guys? Four. Let's give him a hand this morning. Let's sing happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Jordan? 
and give me a hand this morning? Jordan had to have ear surgery this morning. I know Pastor asked for us to pray for him this week. Debbie, I never did get to hear the report. Did everything turn out good? Praise the Lord. We're claiming that the Lord's going to give back what Satan has tried to steal, right? Amen. That's what we prayed for. I know I prayed for him Sunday morning, or Monday morning when he had to have surgery. Give me five names there, buddy. Ooh, how many you got there? You drew a handful. All right. You take this and pass these out for me, if you would. And I'll call the names. Leah Howard, come on down. We have Adam Coleman, Caleb Horrigan, the birthday boy, Jordan Pruitt, and Drew Petrie. Come on down, folks. Get your dollar. Hey, it pays to come to Sunday school, I tell you. I'm going to start putting my name in there. Tim said if, if they start going to fives, he wants his name put in there. <laughs> we'll really have a tough time when we start putting five dollars in there. You know, inflation does go up, though. So one of these days, we may have to start that. Let's give all these dollar winners a hand. Jordan, here. Who didn't get theirs? Somebody? No, we're short somebody. Drew Petrie, thank you. Is he in? Okay, well, I'll hold on to this. If he's here, I'll give it to him later. Let's make welcome our pastor this morning as he comes. Hallelujah. I couldn't help but laugh at Matt. Matt came down, went back up. Had to come down, go back up. He's up there now. Somebody might have to resuscitate him. <laughs> it's good to see you. Great to have everybody with us this morning. Good to have you in church. I got uh, one, one other announcement. Uh, we need more people to sign up to pick and to can beans. If you can help, please sign up. Sign up sheets out there uh, at the bulletin board on the table. Or you may see uh, my wife, Tammy or Sister Cindy Yeary and uh, and help with that. How many likes to eat those big, uh, those nice green beans? I like to eat them. Come on now, how many likes, let me do it again. How many likes to eat those those green beans? Mm-hmm. Now let me, let me ask for a hand of volunteers going to help pick them now. <laughs> now I tell you what. We just want to eat them. <laughs> do you ever hear that story of that uh, rooster made the cornbread? I'll have to add to you later. It's good to see you. Stand with us this morning. Let's ask the Lord to just bless our, uh, our worship service today. I feel His presence in this place already. How many came to have church this morning? How many come to let church happen in you? I want church to happen. In, I, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if we're the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Shekinah glory should come out of us. Not just on us, it should flow from us. Do you believe that? I believe it with all of my heart. Let's ask him to, uh, to move in this place today. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, as Brother Steve said, for all of our Sunday school teachers and the lessons and the word that was put forth today. We pray that you bless that word. Let it sit in good ground, Father. Let it grow in a good heart. Let it minister and bring forth fruit thereof. We pray today that you bless in this place with your presence. Your presence is what we've come for. You said if two or three are gathered in your name, you'd be there in the midst of them. Today, God, we are depending on your presence. Today, we are asking for the great move that you have planned for us today. And we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Remain standing this morning at Brother Robinson. Amen. I feel a little victory in my soul this morning. Amen. Sing with us. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Little victory today.
says he, Jesus Christ, causeth us to always triumph. Always triumph. How do you know you're a winner? Always. I don't care how bad the situation looks. Don't care how glim, uh, how gloomy it is. I want you to know something. Jesus will help you be a triumphant person. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. We've got some request cards that we're giving in today. We want to continue to pray for it. It's, it's good to look over and see Sister Janet uh, Gibson here this morning. And uh, we want to continue to hold up the Laney family and Sister Janet when we pray the loss of her, uh, her brother. We want to continue to uh, hold up Sister June Sharp and Richie uh, and their family today at the loss of uh, Brother Richard Sharp. Uh, maybe sharing a few things with you shortly about what Brother Richard saw. I'm going to preach on heaven this morning, and I want to paint it so real you see it. Uh, but let's remember those families when we pray. Uh, also, uh, Sister uh, Cookie Kroger called me, and Chuck Skinner, uh, their brother-in-law, has passed away, and we want to remember uh, that family. When we pray, we want to lift them up before the Lord. She didn't have any of the arrangements as of yet, but we'll pass those on to you. Uh, Sister Marie Barton, we want to continue to pray for Ed. Ed had uh, surgery this week, and they removed the, uh, the other leg uh, just above his kneecap. And uh, we, need to, we need to pray that the Lord will touch Ed. Be merciful to him as well as her, her children and family. Uh, Brother Ira gave requests for uh, his mother, uh, Zelma, this morning, having uh, a lot of back pain, unable to walk, and uh, the doctors are unable to help. But the great physician will always help. When the doctors can't do anything, the great physician does his best work. How many know that's the truth? Uh, Sister Teresa Ward gave requests for uh, friends, that's Frankie, uh, their son is in children's hospital, six years old, uh, going in for outpatient surgery uh, on the eyes. We want to remember uh, Frankie today. And Mark Ward gave requests for Catherine Ward, his mother, uh, has water on the lungs and the heart. We want to lift them before God today. I'm going to set these down here, ask our uh, brethren to come around. Do you have a special request today, Sister Barb? Amen. Let's pray for Brother Hammett that God will touch him. Sister Newton. Amen. Anyone else? Special need. Amen. Let's pray for Bill Pins. Yes, and Marie, yes. 
do it. He'd do it. That's right. Amen, Marie. today. Rachel? Yes, huh? Sure. Amen. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. When we pray, Norma, turn around and take her hands, will you? Anybody else? Yes, we got to remember Sister Shirley Jennings when we pray. Anybody else? Amen. We'll do it. Anyone else? If you have an unspoken request, would you raise your hands right now? Faye, would you come over here? We want to anoint her.
business, isn't he, folks? It's called people business. He still cares for you and what happens in your life. I believe it with all of my heart. We want the ushers to come. The spirit of worship this morning we're going to give as he has given to us. We're going to give him that which he has blessed us with. And we bless him for it. We bless him for it. We bless him for it today. How many know we're a, we're a blessed people in this room? How many know we're a blessed people in this room? Hallelujah. Brother Roger, Brother Roger's head of our community care ministry, I want you to stand. And I want you to bless this offering and bless these tithes in Jesus' name. So glad that the Lord saved me. Well, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Well, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Well, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me.
you're not saved this morning, look right here, Pastor. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's the greatest thing that will ever happen to you. Because it's the only thing that can happen to you that will be eternal. Come on, Ellen.
that this morning. Somebody in this room needs to know that he'll make a way when everything else has come against you this week. There's a God that's on your side. When everything has turned your world upside down, there's a God that said, let me help you and let me turn it right side up. Is that right? How many's glad you know him this morning? Give him praise in this place.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, presence of the Lord. How many feel His presence in this place right now? How many is glad that you're headed for Beulah Land? How many know beyond a shadow of a doubt right now you're headed for Beulah Land? If you can't raise your hand up in this room right there, you need to get it right with God. You need to make it right with Jesus Christ. Feel a stirring. Matter of fact, I felt a stirring now for a few weeks. How about you? Your Bibles are open to the book of John, chapter 14, the most wonderful passage of Scripture that you have already probably committed to memory. We've preached it. You've preached it. We've, we've shared, shared it at funerals. funerals. We've, we've shared, shared it. it at bedsides, bedsides of hospitals. We, we hold it. It's a matter, matter of hope. But, but I want us to hold it today as a matter of reality. reality. When, when heaven becomes a reality to you, you you'll lose all fascination with, with this world. world. Somebody, Somebody say amen. amen. You, you will lose all fascination with, with this world. world. How, How many is ready, ready to go home to be with Jesus? I'm, I'm ready, ready to go home to be with Jesus. I read an article that said that life expectancy now has been increased again. They now expect us to live longer than they did five years ago. I wonder what insurance company paid them to print that. For some, For some folks, that, that would be good, good information. information. For, For me, it's kind of sad. How many, How many know what I'm talking about? about? How many know what I'm talking about? about? When, when you, you have your dependency placed on things above, above it doesn't matter in this place. place. It doesn't matter in this place. place. Can, Can you say amen? Jesus, Jesus said it this way. I'm glad it's written here for our benefit. I'd like to use for a subject this morning from John, John chapter, chapter 14, 14, the first six verses, some, some biblical facts, facts about a place called heaven. How many know heaven is real? How many know heaven is a fact? How many know people leave here and go there? I'm so glad I was where I was last Saturday evening. I'll never forget it so long as I live being at the bedside of one of our brothers in this church, Brother Richard Sharp. I'll relay some of that to you shortly. But I'm telling you something, I was glad. I was glad as a person, I was glad as a preacher, I was glad as a pastor to be standing right there and watch a man walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. For what he seen beyond us was, was more glorious than, than what we could, could ever see here. And I've, I've, I've said, said to myself a thousand times since last Saturday, I would to God I could see it that clearly and that plainly to where everything here would pale in comparison to. Can you say amen? Jesus said it this way, verse 1, Let not your heart be, be troubled. Trouble. There's, There's troubled hearts, hearts in this room this morning. This morning. Amen. But, but the Bible, Bible said, let it not be troubled. You believe, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house. How many is glad this is a family thing? How many is glad that the Bible promised us that we can have the Spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We're not just 
just looking for anybody to show up. We're not just looking with expectancy to live any old place. We're going back to Dad's. Oh, have mercy. Mm. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, for you, for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. also. How, How many, many know Jesus had you in mind on this day? day? How, How many, many know Jesus had you in his thoughts when he was sharing this with those brethren? brethren? How, How many, many realize today that in the Father's house there's still a place for you? He, he wasn't just talking about Peter, James, and John. And John. He's, he's talking about who? You. you. Turn, Turn and tell your neighbor he's preaching to you this morning. He said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am. I want to answer some questions appropriately this morning from the word of God about the dead. And I want you to underline these words, where I am. Am. Hello, Hello, Church, Church of God. God. That, that ye may be, be what? Also. Also where? Where, where he is. Is, is that, that right? And, and whether I go, go you know, and, and the way you know. know. Thomas, Thomas said unto him, him, Lord, we, we know, know not whither thou goest, and how can, can we know the way? way? It doesn't, it doesn't get, get any more simpler, simpler than, than verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the, the way, the, the truth, and the life. No, no man cometh unto, unto the Father but by me. You, you are, are not going, going to heaven this morning outside of Jesus Christ. Heaven will not be yours today outside of Jesus Christ. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how moral you are. I don't care how great you are, how fantastic you are, how superb you are, how gifted you are, how talented you are. If you don't have Jesus, you are not going to heaven. I need, I need a little more witness, witness than, than that. that. If, if you, you don't have Jesus, Jesus you are not going to heaven. heaven. If, if you, you have Jesus, Jesus on the other hand, hand there is a place for you. If you, you have Jesus, Jesus on the other hand, there is something in mind for you that is yet to be seen, felt, touched, enjoyed. Come on, somebody. We, we call it the Father's house. house. We, we call, call it heaven. heaven. The songwriter said, I call it home. But I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Jesus said, if it were not so, I sure would have told you. But I promise you standing here this morning, heaven is real. And the only way to get there is through and by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you give me a witness today? Hallelujah. D.L. Moody once said, The thought of heaven has cheered the soul of many believers. Some say that we are fools to believe in heaven. But to deny heaven is to deny Jesus. He came from heaven. It is our place, or it is to place our departed loved ones in the cold, dark grave. It, it is, is to, to deprave millions of Christians of the greatest hope that they have. It, it is, is to deny, to deny heaven is equal to murder, for it kills hope. To, to thievery, for it robs joy. To, to slander, because, because it, God, it calls God a liar. I believe D.L. Moody was on it this morning. Can you say amen? But I also believe this. It doesn't matter what you believe about heaven, it's not going to diminish in its beauty. It doesn't matter what you believe about heaven today, 
it is, it is not, not going to take that out of the hearts and lives of those who do believe it. Believe it. Doesn't matter if you go there this morning, understand, somebody will be there. Hallelujah to God. Doesn't matter if you choose not to believe, there is going to be somebody that's going to believe, and Jesus is going to come for that somebody. And I want you to know standing here today, I've made a decision in my life. How about you that I'm going to be a part of that number? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heaven is a wonderful place. It's a biblical place. It's a place, brother and sister, that is real as the room that you're standing in, sitting in right now. It's, it's that, that real. real. Do, you Do you believe it? it? An, An American, American tourist visited the, uh, the, the 19th, 19th century Polish rabbi. I love this. And, and, and he was astonished to see that the rabbi's home was only a simple room filled with books plus a table and a bench. The, the tourist asked, asked Rabbi, where, where is your furniture? Where, where is yours? Replied the rabbi. Mine? Asked the, the puzzled American, American but, but I'm, I'm a visitor here. here. I'm, I'm only passing through. The, the rabbi smiled and grinned and, and said, so am I. So am I. So am I. Ah, how many realize today that the rabbi's got it right? We are just passing through. We are just on a mission. We are on a journey. Can you say amen? I've heard some pictures of heaven. But I want you to know, brother and sister, you and I, you and I are headed to a better place. Can you say amen? I've heard some descriptions. I've heard of, of experiences that people have had. But there's none clearer example and a picture of heaven than that which we get from the Word of God. What about heaven? What does the Bible say about heaven? Are people in heaven right now able to see? Are they able to feel? Are, Are they, they able, able to, to communicate? communicate? Can, Can they, they see us? And what, what exactly are they doing there? Is, is heaven a place, brother and sister, for the dead? I don't believe that because, because the Bible said that God is the God of the living. Hello, somebody. He is the God of the living. Let me make a few notations. The Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Hello. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I began to ponder some things this week, and rightfully so. It's a good week to ponder them. Can you say amen? I began to ask myself some questions, and I also had to filter a few questions this week that's been asked to me. And I, I just want to share some thoughts with you about this place called heaven. Question number one. Can people see what's taking place here? Can people in heaven feel like we feel right now? A, a, a few brilliant, I, I think brilliant deductions because I say brilliant not of my brilliance, but of the Word of God and of the writing of Paul and of the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Understand something. See if you feel the way I do. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. If I am present with the Lord, my next and obvious question is, where is the Lord? If I die as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a born-again Christian, someone who has put his trust and faith in the way, the truth, and the life, which is the only way to get there, say amen, if I die today, what, what happens, happens to me when, when I, I take my last breath here and my next breath there? there? What, what will, will I encounter? When, when I close my eyes here or they are closed for me, when, when I open them there, what sight will I behold? <laughs> oh, I feel the hand of God in this room. Hey, if I'm absent from the body and I'm present with the Lord, where's the Lord? The, the Bible, Bible says that the Lord is at the right hand of the Father. I can't hear you. You're, you're afraid to walk this with me, but you better get in here. The Bible said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. The Bible says the Lord is at the right hand of the Father. Somebody shout amen. So when I leave this body and I enter the presence of the Lord, I not only enter the presence of the Lord,
presence of the Lord, but I'm at the right hand of the Father. Oh, have mercy. Now hold that thought. When, when I, I get, get to, to the right hand of the Father, how, how many, many know that Pastor, Pastor Rick's an energetic, energetic kind of dude? dude? Come, Come on. on. How, how many, many know that pretty much my wife will testify something has to be going on all the time. The only, the only time when something is not supposed to go on is, is when I hit, hit the couch. couch. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. I've, got I've got children that's just, just like me. Bo, Bo will, will run, and he will go, and he don't stop. stop. If, if you're, you're up till four, four Bo's up till four. four. That's, That's the truth. truth. But, but when, when you put him in park, and, and when, when you, you stop him, I promise, promise you there's, there's been times he fell asleep straight up. up. When, when you, you cease the activity, activity he's, he's just, just like his daddy. daddy. So, so I'm, I'm wondering, wondering to myself, I'm, I'm an exciting kind of guy. guy. I'm, I'm a busy kind of guy. guy. I, I like to do things. Just, just to tell me that I go to heaven and I sit there and wait on all the rest of you to arrive kind of bores me. I told, I told Sister June, June Sharp, I said, you know, I... I know, I know that Richard is fascinated, fascinated with all the people that are there, but, but I can guarantee you there's a part of Richard that's walking around going, how does this work? There's, there's a part, part of Richard Sharp that, 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 that says, that's how you did that. You, you ought, ought to hear those idiots idiot back home tell us how you did that. Come on, somebody. How many know what I'm talking about? If I'm absent from the body, I'm present with the Lord, and the Lord is at the right hand of the Father. What's the Lord doing? Because I'm going to do what the Lord does. I'm going to be a part of the Lord's interest. I'm going to be a part of the Lord's activity. Hello, somebody. Does that sound like a, 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 a pretty good deduction, brilliant deduction for you? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. The Lord is at the right hand of the Father. If I'm dead and I, I'm now in the presence of the Lord, I'm at the right hand of the Father. That's wonderful. Now we're at the right hand of the Father. Now we're with the Lord. What are we doing? The Bible said he's making intercession for you and me. The things that are concerning Jesus are the things that are happening to you. How many understand that? Somebody asked me this week, let me just share some things with you. Pastor Rick, do you believe in heaven they can see? Pastor Rick, do you believe in heaven they can feel? Pastor Rick, do you believe in heaven that they can cry? The Bible says you know that God will wipe all the tears from their eyes. I said, excuse me, make sure that you see that passage in the content that is written. In the content of the wiping of the tears from our eyes, know this, that's in the end of all things. That's when everything is finished. Hello, somebody. I believe with all of my heart, if a man can go from here to a place called hell, hold this thought. If a man in Luke 16 can leave here and open his eyes in hell and he can see and he can feel and he can speak and he can cry, come on, somebody, and he can remember and what's on his mind is his five brethren which are not there yet but are on their way. Come on. If a rich man in hell experiences all of that, I've got to tell you something. That a man in the presence of Jesus has got to be greater and it's got to be a more awesome experience than a rich man in hell. Hallelujah. I haven't seen my mother since January the 8th, 19, January the 4th, 1968. But I can see her when I shut my eyes this morning. As plain as if she were here right now. I see Timothy. I see Thomas in their baby blue silk. 
little gals. I see mom's big buttons on that blue and white dress. I see that as if I was standing there at six years of age. Somebody said, oh, don't tell them stories. You get me all bent out of shape when you tell them stories. I have to tell you that story because that's the last thing I remember. Come on, somebody. How many know what I'm talking about? But I don't remember it in a morbid way. I remember it as my grandmother said when she pulled me away from the coffin and she walked me out and set me in the car as we was waiting for everybody else to leave. I never forget what my grandma said. She said, Ricky, Mama is not here. But that does not mean that Mama's not anywhere. Mama is in the presence of the Lord and you will see her again. How many know to a six-year-old boy that meant the world to me? Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Now I'm going to tell you something. You can call me an idiot. You can say, Pastor's lost it. He's going off the deep end. But on various occasions of my life, I have took the pictures of my children and I have put them in a Ziploc plastic bag and I have placed them under the, the, the vase, the vase, whatever you want to call it, of my mother's headstone. I know good and well, listen to me, I'm not an idiot, that the angels don't come and take those photographs to heaven. Don't be stupid. I know my mother does not come there. Hello, somebody. I know she is not there, thank God. Hello. But that tells me that this is real and she's alive and she can see. Hello, somebody. If a rich man in hell can open his eyes and see, I'm convinced today. And then you know what? I found Bible for it. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews, seeing, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us run this race with patience. You know what? As I stand here today and I say I haven't seen Mama since 1968, I'm convinced that Mama's in heaven saying, I'm still watching. I'm still looking. Why? Because I'm in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord, son, is making intercession for you. The Lord has you on his mind. Can somebody give me a biblical witness? I fought this message. I got here early this morning and fought it. And I'll tell you why I fought it. Because the enemy said, folks are going to believe you are an idiot, that you are delirious. And then I knew the minute he said that, that I was the most sane man in the planet. Because he's a liar. And I knew when he said not to, I knew I was on it. How many say amen? How many say amen? No wonder the Bible said precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saint. Because that saint joins him, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Can you say amen? You know heaven's going to be a wonderful place. Heaven's going to be a biblical place. Can you say amen? It is a prepared place. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. Amen. I remember saying to my dad one time, maybe... Maybe the Lord needed my mama to help me to help get my room ready. You know how messed up it always is. Come on, somebody. I don't know that. I do know this. For a little while in my life, I went through a bitter stage. And I did like a lot of people do at death. I blamed God. I pointed at God. I used terminology that is biblically wrong. And I said... God took her. God took my mother. Why would a God take a boy's mama at the age of six and leave four children to be raised by a man? My dad is a good man, but one man don't need to raise four children. Some of you are not going to agree with that at all. Huh? Why would you do what kind of God would that be? Then God began to share things with me. 
God is not the taker. Death is the enemy. Satan is the stealer, the destroyer, and the taker. Come on, somebody. The privilege is that when death takes, when a saint is taken, it is God that is there that does the receiving. When a lost man is taken, the Bible says he ends up in a place called hell. Hello, church. He is in the fire being tormented. But when a saint dies, he is received of God, not taken of God. God does not point the finger of death. Death has his own pointing. Can you say amen? So if we understand that God is the receptive and the enemy is the taker, then we'll put the blame where it ought to be and we'll let God be he who is to be praised because he gave us a way of escape from the hand of death. Pastor Rick, it's pretty callous this morning to mention death and dying in heaven after such difficult and hard funeral services this week. Might I suggest something to you? Right now is when they need hope. Come on, Church of God. Right now is when they need to be reminded that in Jesus Christ, we have a hope that this is not the finality of things. This is only the beginning of things. And if Christians can't talk about heaven, who's going to? And if we can't raise our eyes and look beyond this life, who is going to? Can you say amen? I think I'm now more convinced than ever that I'm going to preach my own funeral. In some ways... I'll do that regardless. Amen? Huh? But I thought I'd have Brother Steve and Larry and the camera folks to come on in one day and just go ahead and preach my funeral. And you just watch it on the big screen. I'd, I'd at that funeral go, Robin, come to the music. And you see me doing that? Huh? I'd point over here and say, John, walk for the Lord. Can you see that? Some of you sit in regular places, so I could look at you. And I'd say, don't you, uh, listen, Mickey, stop crying. Huh? How many know what I'm talking about? Hey, uh, Pastor Rick, that's, you sound so silly when you talk that way. Let me tell you something right here in this place. Death is what should sound silly to the saints because it's not the end, it's the beginning. Can you say amen? Heaven is not a facet of some fiction uh, a mindset of some Christian belief. Heaven is a fact of the Word of God. Heaven, brother, is on the lips of our Savior. If you believe in Jesus, you got to believe in the Father's house. If you believe in Jesus, you got to believe that this is just, brother, a passing through. We're on a pilgrimage, and one of these days, mark it down, I'm going to make that journey, and when I do, I'm going to end up uh, in the presence uh, of the Most High God. The journey there is a difficult one. But the arrival, whew, I got a gift of imagination. How many know that? Last Saturday, I stood at Richard's bedside. Robin and I walked in the room. Richard said, let's pray. We had prayer. We prayed. We prayed for God's grace. We prayed for God's mercy. We prayed. We prayed for God's touch and God's spirit. Hello, somebody. After we got through praying, we talked about how he felt, how things are. Typical hospital room visitation chit-chat. Richard kind of looked vacant. He kind of looked like he was in his own little place. All of a sudden, we were talking. He said, let's pray again. 
Let's pray again. You know, when a man in his condition asks you to pray again, you do what, church? You pray again. If it asked me seven times, come on, somebody. After we prayed the second time, things begin to happen that I'll never explain. I'll never be able to put in words. I'll never be able to express. But let me attempt somewhat little way so that you know this morning through the eyes of one of our own that heaven's a real place and God's not wanting us to begrudge death. God's not wanting us to be fearful of our lives in these last days as we face turmoil and persecution. We, we need as the church of the living God where Thessalonians says, Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. The dead shall rise, and we shall rise to be with them and meet the Lord in the middle of the air. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That tells me that the enemy is going to try to invade our ranks and pull the very comfort and the very power and the testimony and the belief of the heaven out of the church. But I'll tell you, as I stood there, all of a sudden Richard said, they're so green, it's so green. And, and we kind of looked at each other and we, we thought... Let me be real with you that he's hallucinating. He's delirious. These things are affecting him. And, and, and Robin, I remember Robin stepping aside and we're looking for something green. About that time, Robin looked around and yeah, yeah, Richard, the wallpaper and the trim had green in it. And Robin said, yeah, the, that, that something along the lines of that yeah, paper has, uh, that's green, that, that's pretty. And Richard looked at Robin like he was an idiot. That's a new look for Robin. Am I lying? He looked right beyond Robin like, don't you see this? And he says it again, it's so, it's so green. And he tried to gesture with his weak hands. So, so, and I, I'll never forget how Richard used that word, so. Everything that day was so. It wasn't like so. It wasn't like some of us act like heaven. So I'm saved. Richard that day was a dying man. Richard that day had liver failure, kidney failure, pancreas shut down. Hello, church. Richard was a dying man, but that day Richard was all. Oh. oh, I feel the hand of God in this room. If you got to go home, go home. I'm going to preach till I'm finished. Uh, Richard said, oh, it's so, it's so, it's so green. And we're, we're wondering what's green. Now he's got our attention because right after he said everything's green, in just a few minutes of chit-chat and talking and different things, uh, Richard's now has got a fix on his eyes. Uh, his eyelids don't move. His eyes don't bat. He is fixed, brother and sister. You've seen that look before. He is fixed. He's not looking at us. Sometimes he gazes at you. He'll, he'll, he'll turn when you speak. He'll, he'll answer, quite honestly, if you talk. But he is fixed. And all of a sudden, he says, it's so blue. <laughs> and, and immediately one of the girls said, well, what's blue? He said, the river. And he looked at you like, the river. Can't you see? At one time, he, he told somebody, I believe it was Sharon, to move. Move, Sharon. And she's moving. It's a river. It's so, it's so blue. I can't see the water. Water. Richard said the water's so good. He's got good water. That was his words. Good water. I'm not trying to re-preach Richard's funeral, but I, I, something touched my heart that day that I hope never leaves me. You know, when a child of God backslides, it's when they lose their vision of heaven. You know, when you get cold and clammy, it's when you lose your vision of heaven. You know, when the enemy starts defeating your life, uh, when you think that your life is contained in this world. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm a dangerous man this morning because this life means nothing. Uh, I've got a glimpse uh, of the other side. I've got a view into the portals of glory. Oh, hallelujah. Every bit of that's prepared. I go to prepare a place for you. All of us are looking at each other now. It's dawned on us. The, one of the ladies come in and said, Heard, heard standing there, heard things that Richard was saying to some way, and she mentioned that he's, what you say, he's hallucinating. We kind of smiled at each other, and we didn't tell her this, but our look said, get out of here. You can leave. This room's for believers. Huh? 
How many know what I'm talking about? We knew he wasn't hallucinating. He went from those green waters. Uh, I'm telling you, it was as real standing there. Part of me didn't want to move. Part of me didn't want to speak. Part of me didn't want nobody to speak. I just want to hear what he says. Because he's somewhere that I ain't. And he's headed somewhere that I want to go. Come on, somebody. How many know what I'm talking about? All of a sudden, he went from blue waters. He went to turd and picking fruit. How many know what I'm talking about? You'd see him try to get... June would ask him, what are you doing, Richard? He said, the fruit. The fruit. It's so good. Everything's so... I'm telling you something, I can see that. The Bible says in the land of Canaan that it took two men to carry one pot of the grapes out of the land of Canaan. Hello, somebody. That's fruit on this world. That's fruit by God provided for him or from him for the children of Israel on this world. I'm telling you, if fruit on this world takes two men to carry one pot, my goodness, no wonder Richard said, that's good fruit. Uh, come on, somebody. Yeah, I promise you something, it's real. Uh, what, what was he doing? David said it best in Psalm 23. Yeah, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, he maketh me to lie down, yet this church in green pastures. Uh, it's like God was saying settle down Richard uh, lay down Richard uh, suffering's about finished Richard uh, he leadeth me beside the steel waters uh, hello somebody uh, and they're so blue uh, hello uh, he restoreth my soul uh, he prepares a table a table of fruit if you will uh, in the presence of mine enemy the enemy was death the enemy was dying and Richard was picking fruit already from the hand of God. Come on, somebody. That's the hope of the believer in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Prepare the table in the presence of mine enemy. Death was knocking. But death was coming for a vacant body. Because he wasn't going to get this one. All of a sudden, Richard says, I'll never forget this. He about raised halfway up out of bed. And he says these words, They're so big. About that time, chill bumps running everybody in that building, in that room. And it, uh, Debbie or Sharon or June, one of them said, What's big, Richard? I'll never forget as plain as I'm preaching to you this morning. This was the words he said The gates. <laughs> and once again, he's trying to gesture. And once again, he's looking at us like, You guys can't see this? I promise you something, Richard's analytical mind was looking at Gates. This man is a, he's the number one fan of the Discovery Channel. I've got tapes of home of bridges that I don't know where they exist, roads that China is building, a dam that I don't know where it's at, but Richard knew where it's at and thought I should be interested. How many know what I'm talking about? So when Richard Sharp says, they're so big, I promise you, we took a little step backwards. And he said, what's, what's the big? He said, the gates, the gates. Debbie said, what? I believe it was Debbie said, what do they look like, Richard? And he, and he, and he again looks at us or talks to us like we're, we're crazy. They're pearl. And he, and he pointed over to me. I don't know why me. He pointed over to me and he goes, he likes pearl. Maybe as a sign, I'm supposed to buy you something for your anniversary that's pearl, but is that what he said? He said, he likes pearl. I'm going to tell you something. I have fallen madly in love with pearl since last Saturday. How many know what I'm talking about? I knew what he was seeing. I knew where he was at that particular point in time. Somebody said, "Why do you see gold? He said, no, I don't see gold. Sure, Richard, you see gold? No, I don't see gold. We got to talk and he didn't see gold because he hadn't went in yet. You understand that? 
the gold's inside. The streets are gold, but the gates are pearl. Outside the gates is the green pasture. Outside the gates is the river of water that flows from the throne of God that splits heaven. Come on, son. Richard was taking a trip, and I'm gonna tell you something. I'll never forget that trip because the Bible said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's one thing to read it in John 14. It's another to read it in a believer's eyes. It's another to believe it from a believer's lips as he's leaving this life. Are you afraid? She said, no. Richard, are you in pain? Almost smirking. No. 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 I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll never forget these words. I will come and receive you unto myself. Can I tell you something? The difference in Luke 16's death of the burial, death and burial of Lazarus, that's different than today. Can I tell you a difference? In Luke 16, Jesus hadn't died. In Luke 16, Jesus hadn't went to the heart of the earth and led captivity captive. In Luke 16, the death of the righteous was awaited by, addressed by, and issued out of here by an angelic host. The Bible said, cause the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Hello, somebody. You know the difference in dying before Luke, six, Luke 16 and the beggar's death and the difference between that death and mine and your death? The difference is John chapter 14. The difference is he doesn't send angels now to carry us home because it was Jesus that said, hello somebody, I will receive you unto myself. <laughs> ah, come on church, come on church. Ah, pastor, can it be so? Pastor, is it true? I believe it's as true as I'm standing right here in front of you this morning after he saw those gates, after Richard beheld the gates and the fruit and the pasture and the green uh, grass and, and, and the blue waters. He laid there silent. He laid there. And, and we actually thought he was going to go to sleep. He was going to rest. The talking stopped. Things went to, a, to, to let him rest. Do whatever you got to do. We're not going to leave you, but we're here. All of a sudden, when things got quiet, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Richard leaned straight up with his head in the bed and he said, Hello! I'll never forget this. I'll tell you, when Richard did that, I about come out of my shoes. Because when Richard, the girls will tell you, when Richard did that, I didn't care where I was. I started looking. If Jesus was coming there, I might have volunteered. I might have signed up for the trip. But he wasn't coming for me that day. What Richard saw, he said he's in the clouds. He wants us to come. Huh? Let me tell you something, church. Pastor Rick, that's stupidity. No, stupidity is all these uh, out-of-death experiences where people talk uh, 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 stupid talk and about foolish things. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you something. There's a realness that's about heaven. There's a realness about the things of God. There's a realness about the presence of Christ that comes alone beside of you when death knocks on your heart's door. There's a Savior that's ready to receive you and to take you in. Why? Because I go to prepare a place for you and if I go I will come again and receive you unto myself hallelujah glory glory if we can't preach it like it's real then let's quit let's just get out of here let's just die and be done with it. But I'm telling you something. Heaven is a biblical place. 
It's a prepared place. It's a perpetual place. Huh? It's a place of promise. It's a place of blessing. It's a place of his presence. Hello, church. Huh? Hello, church. Come on, somebody. If, if you pretend with me this morning that eternity is the... Come on to the music. Look, at, look right here at Pastor for a minute. If you pretend with me one moment that this, from this point of this pulpit to this point of this pulpit is the whole spectrum of eternity, the whole spectrum of eternity. If life expectancy is 80 years, I want you to see something. If this represents all of eternity, if you can see this this morning, that little old bitty dot on the end of that ink pen would be what little speck of time that we live here. Can you imagine the life that is awaiting us over yonder in the land where there's no more death, there's no more dying, there's no more tears, there's no more heartache, there's no more anguish, there's no more sorrow. Come on, somebody. There's no funeral homes, no hospitals. Can you imagine a place where we live eternally? Hey, I feel the hand of God. No wonder this life is nothing but a speck in comparison to an eternity with the Lord. My God, we got a heaven to go to and a Jesus to be there with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Woo! Oh, my Savior. Listen to Pastor Rick this morning. Listen right here. Look right here. If you are not saved, look at me. Look at me. If you are not saved, this is what you're living for. You're getting everything that you can cram in to one little speck of eternity and the rest of your life, the rest of your eternal existence will be suffering, darkness, torment, flame, loneliness, remembrance of when you could have had it, but you didn't get it. Can you see this? You can't see it from where you are, can you? If you're in this room and you live 200 years, let me do this. Can you see that speck? If you live 500 years, that's still the reflection of your lifespan. In comparison to eternity, I had six years with my mom. Richie had seventy five. Richie. How old Richie? 28? Huh? 33. With his dad. Janet. Two days. Two days. She should have had 60. With her brother. Let me tell you something this morning. That little speck is nothing. Compared to what we're going to enjoy and the length of eternity on the other side. God, I feel the hand of God. And why anybody would want to live their life for this life only and miss, I'll never. I 
that's probably the one thing in heaven I'll never understand is why they chose to do that. Because you see, if you miss heaven and you miss eternity with God, it's because you have chosen not to. It's not God kicking you out. It's not God keeping you from. It's Jesus that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, people are sitting in this room thinking of different things. Sister Glenda is sitting here today thinking of her daddy. Stan. Her mommy's right next to her. Stan, Sister Newton. That's evident. That's apparent. Janet, Stan. So real to you this week especially. So real to you. I look at Aunt Ree. Stan, Aunt Ree, I look at Mom. Not too long ago, Stan, Mom. They stood at the same bedside of Mamo Evans. We had her for 80, 80 what? 90? Look at this. 90 years is but a what? Just think what we're going to enjoy when this is finished. Do you understand that? Does anybody in this room get in this picture this morning? I feel the hand of God in this room today. You see that dot? One of these days, Bob, you're going to come and you're going to walk by my coffin. Or I'm going to walk by yours. Do you understand that? Pastor, that's morbid. That ain't morbid. That's life. And the beauty of that, Dan, is when I stand beside of yours, or you stand beside of mine, we know it's just the beginning. It's not the end. Stand, Rachel. You needed this this morning as much as the rest. Peggy was a wonderful daughter and a wonderful lady. You should see her now. Do you feel the same way she does? I can't wait to get to heaven. I got a whole host of family. Huh? You see, while you guys are looking at Pastor this morning, you're wondering what planet I dropped off of. My papa is in the presence of the Lord. And my papa is going, give them to him. Tell it like it is. Can't wait to show you. Can't wait to show you. What are you thinking this morning? you got a loved one in your mind right now stand right now I can't go through and pick all the deaths stand right now if you have a loved one that's immediately in your mind right now right now you see death is such a it's such a touchy issue So many questions. You're right, Charlene. She shouted. You're right. You're right. Pastor, let me say it again. Absent from the body present with the Lord. And where is the Lord? Right hand of the Father making intercession 
for me. Now, I'm not into Catholicism, praying to saints. I don't tell my mom to go tell Jesus. But just like you, there's been a few times at the birth of my children that I've told Jesus. You think you could tell mom? She's got four more breaths coming. And she better make a bigger place. Have you ever did that? Tell me I'm not the only one that's crazy. Eight of in this room is crazy. Thank you. Is that crazy, Pastor? If that's crazy, somebody better give me a different interpretation of Hebrews. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You can't be a witness if you can't see it. And you can't see it if you're not in the presence of the Savior who is making intercession for you. Stand in this room, everyone. I wonder if there's anybody in this room this morning that if you breathe your last, your last breath right now you wouldn't go to this place that's prepared that's glorious that's eternal that has his presence and has your people would you like to make it right this morning would you like to pray today if you would There'd be a lot of heaven-bound people that love to pray with you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, you got to touch a life today. you got to let somebody in this room know this morning, right now, that there's a heaven to gain and they're losing it. you got to let them know that time is swiftly passing and they need to do this quickly because heaven is at stake and that's something you don't want to lose. Touch lives in this room right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If God is touching your heart, I want you to leave your seat and come to this altar and make it right right now.
vision of heaven real in our minds and the reality of heaven alive in our faith. And we'll give you thanks. We'll give you praise. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap of praise if you believe heaven's real. says that because Ed about took his last breath sitting in that seat right there if you'd have told Ed when he come to church that morning that today Ed death's going to come knocking Ed would have said no way I'm going to church but that morning it happened right there and ever since that occasion Ed Barton has always said no matter when I go to see him Pastor Rick, it pays to be ready. It pays to be ready. It pays to be ready. Because nobody knows when you're going to exit this place. But I'm going to tell you this. If I exit before you see me again, I'm on the other side of this dock. And I'm having a blast. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? I'll see you back in this place 6.30 tonight as our worship service. Bring somebody with you. The choir, Sanctuary Choir, be here at 5.45. Thank you and may God bless you. If you want to sign up for them beans, you need to do that out there on the table.